Hello America, my name is Nicholas Patterson. I'm from Jay County, Indiana, which is in the middle of nowhere. Jay County is full of farmers and hunters, and they all share the same passion, and that passion is guns. Now I'm one of those people who shares that passion, and that's why I'm making you this film to show you why I support this amendment and why it's important to me. history of the Second Amendment. In 1787, our founding fathers came together to create a new constitution. They came up to agreement to make the Bill of Rights, which is composed of ten important amendments. The second one is what I'm going to explain to you. As stated in my pocket constitution, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I'm going to show you a video clip shortly. It's about our government teacher at the local high school who's going to explain his perspective of why the Constitution was made with the Second Amendment being included. I believe the Second Amendment was placed in the Constitution because it had such an adverse effect upon our Founding Fathers. They felt so strongly in the possession of, uh, of the right to bear arms that it should be included in the founding document of American government. So that's why it has been placed in there. Uh, the Second Amendment should be treated uh, with the same reverence as all other uh, aspects of the Bill of Rights and anything else placed in the Constitution itself. Excellent. I'm going to show you another video clip of another teacher expressing his perspective of what the Second Amendment was made for. Okay, my thoughts on the Second Amendment um, as to why the founders of the Constitution put it in the Constitution to begin with is the understanding of the, the context of where they were coming from in terms of they had just fought a revolution to overthrow what they just, you know, deemed to be an unjust uh, government, you know, government that was not working for the people. and. The, the wording of the Second Amendment does leave some room for interpretation. You know, it says something to the effect of, you know, uh, being necessary for the security of a free state and, you know, secure from who or where, you know, from foreign forces or, you know, more directly from internal forces. And I think that, you know, of course it's impossible to know exactly what they were thinking, but the idea that no government is going to you know, recognize itself as being tyrannical and despotic and so any government that basically you know rules unjustly you know they're going to use their power and authority to do that if they deem it necessary and the only recourse the people would have then is armed rebellion which you know, obviously the founding fathers I don't know if they were big fans of it, but they deemed it a necessary thing for the furtherance of humanity. So, you know, I think they wanted to preserve the ability of future generations to rebel against a government which could become undemocratic or unjust. I hope those teachers' perspectives have helped you understand what the Second Amendment is really about. You see, the Second Amendment is one of the most controversial issues of America. There are many politicians in D.C. that work hard to protect the Second Amendment. Various uh, politicians like Alan Keyes from Illinois and Ron Paul from Texas, they are very hardcore in protecting the Second Amendment. I have some C-SPAN footage to show you why. Boldly, though, that I am a supporter of the Second Amendment, and I believe strongly that law-abiding citizens should have their right to keep and bear arms left intact. The gun control mentality is ruthlessly absurd. Uh, it suggests that you pass a law which will bind law-abiding citizens. They won't have access to weapons. Now, we know that criminals, by definition, are people who don't obey laws. Therefore, you can access to illegal drugs and other things right now. 
That means you end up with a situation in which the law-abiding folks can't defend themselves and the crooks have all the guns. I don't believe in arming the criminals and protecting the criminals while leaving the law-abiding citizens disarmed and telling our police that they must work under every disadvantage. That doesn't serve order, it doesn't serve law, and it doesn't make sense. Curbing free expression, even that which is violent and profane, is un-American and can't solve our school problem. Likewise, gun laws don't work, and more of them only attack the liberties of law-abiding citizens. Before the first federal gun law in 1934, there was a lot less gun violence, and guns were readily accessible to everyone. Lack of gun laws has not been a cause of violence. Those speeches make good points. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. People need to understand that restricting guns from citizens only deprives those citizens from hunting for food and help defend themselves. If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have them. Gun control, in my opinion, is very wrong. I'll explain why. Mao Zedong, the communist leader of China, has imposed gun control measures and he slaughtered 60 million Chinese people. Same thing with Joseph Stalin of Russia. He imposed the same measures, and he slaughtered 40 to 60 million Russian people, too. Same thing with Hitler. He imposed measures on Jewish people, and the Holocaust has been created. That's why it's important to me that the Second Amendment exists in our Constitution. It is important for our freedoms and liberties. Thank you for watching. God bless America.